we did some empirical work in a hospital, uh, Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago, and there we shadowed hospitalists. I don't know how many of you are familiar with hospitalists, but just to be sure, a hospitalist is a physician, a medical doctor, okay? And this medical doctor almost is like what we would call in business a case manager, okay? The medical, the, the hospitalist is basically the hub that interacts and coordinates everything about a patient's file, a patient's progress, and this generalist, so a hospitalist is a generalist as opposed to a specialist, needs to interact and coordinate with a lot of other specialists. Okay? And to give you an idea of the workflow of such a physician, here I've got a little flow chart to make things very clear. So these physicians, they come in, they start their day by looking at their patient's charts. And then they start basically walking the hallways and visiting, doing a little visit with each patient. Okay. Notice the timeline. The timeline here are average numbers. How much time does this hospitalist actually spend with the patient? On the order of roughly two hours. Then roughly six to eight hours on all the rest. These folks work hard, they have long days, okay? But so this is important to keep in mind that the fact of the time they spend with the patient is a relatively small part of their total workload. The majority of the work is actually filled by two things. Coordinating with other physicians and other caregivers, okay? getting information from them, then making a diagnosis, and then putting all of this in the electronic record of the patient. Okay. I'm putting that up because what I've said here so far is mostly what I would call their individual workflow. But you can see when they have to like talk with other people, they need to reach out to other people. And so there's a whole aspect of the workflow that we call the collaborative workflow. And just in plain English, what does that mean? You are the hospitalist. You have a question about patient X. You will reach out to one of your colleagues. You can send a page, you can make a phone call, or even a face-to-face -face conversation. Right? Now what's going to happen is that that person that the hospitalist wants to talk to may not be directly available. They have their own individual work. And therefore, oftentimes, they'll say like, well, I can't talk now, or I'll get back to you later. Okay? And so there's a whole back and forth kind of discussion until eventually they have their conversation. This should sound very familiar to most of us, actually. Okay? But all this detail becomes very important for what's to come. Now, when then the party that you reach out to comes back and says, look, I'm available now, then the hospitalist will get a message. But by then, the hospitalist typically has moved on to other patients. Right? And you can start seeing there's going to be a lot of interruptions and switching between different patients. Okay? And then effectively, they decide whether it's support important enough or not, and they go back and forth. And all of this happens all the time until eventually the hospitalist finishes their work of all their patients, which is on the order in our hospital, which is a an academic hospital between 12 to 15 patients per day. We did some old-fashioned shadowing of the hospitalist, which means that one of my PhD students walked with one of the hospitalists and recorded every second of what they were doing, including with whom they talked, when they sent a request, when they came back, etc., etc. All those interactions that my student observed are in color. Okay? Those are the colored interactions, and that's what I call the observed physical network. You're also aware about the whole int interest in big data. Right? I've got to bring this in, too. This is kind of a chart that you can think about small data versus big data. Okay? The small data is what we observed. And you see that the colored interactions is a subset 
of that bigger part. The bigger part comes from the digital network that is captured in the electronic health record system of Northwestern Memorial. So we're working together also with a colleague who's in the medical school and he does exactly bioinformatics. And he's got access to the entire data warehouse of the hospital. So what we've done here is we've merged We've merged the data of the physical observations with the electronic observations. Okay. A few things you see right away, there's a lot more stuff in the electronic database than was observed. That means that all the white interactions are more of that, what I call that earlier kind of process collaboration. Those were not simultaneous collaborations. Those were residents, staff, pharmacists, physicians writing something in the file of that patient without necessarily requiring a, f a simultaneous interaction with the hospitalist. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, so two things here, as I said, small data versus big data. And of course, in, in healthcare, they're interested to figure out, like, is this electronic database capturing sufficient amount of the reality. Okay. And you'll see it pretty much captures most of it, but not all. If you look carefully, there's a few interactions. I'm going to pick some out. This reach out to this pharmacist is not in the electronic health record. Okay. This discussion with the primary care physician is not in the electronic health record. And I think there's some others like with this physician also. Okay. So that's kind of interesting and it begs the question, what is the overlap between the two data sets? I also like you to make a quick guess as to how many people are involved in the care process of this patient. Okay. Here's the answer, well here's the question. This is for a specific patient that we observed for six days. And we took those exact six days and we looked at the electronic healthcare record. Right? And so now we can look at, ask what is X and what is Y. Instead of having you uh, try to count it, I'll give you the answers. The observed team is 17 people and the entire team is 102. This is actually fairly representative, 100 people touch the file of an average patient, a hundred. I'm gonna show you later statistics that we have patients that were touched by 385 people, okay? And then you can start seeing why this is such an expensive process.